Hello my soccer universe. The group stage of the 22 World Cup is in the books. And we have 16 teams that are advancing. We're probably, probably, and I will have to go back through the past tournaments, but I think we never had such a crazy ending to a group stage. And I have my high doubts that this can be topped. I think this was the highlight of the World Cup. This past four, four, three days. First day, we had two straight shootouts that made it interesting. But where it really came to life was then especially the Group C. Uh, with Argentina, we had uh, Spain and the Belgium groups. And we had a little bit of a bizarre, almost equally crazy finish today as well. Uh, at the end of Group H. And then almost, we had uh, in Group uh, G also some, but uh, it did not feel like it. It felt like service with Switzerland is there for the win. So it was a little bit lacking the drama previously. Um, I gotta say, while I would have loved to have Serbia move on, because I really like the potential of the offensive player, when I look at their defense, uh, it's a little bit like Germany where, um, you know, you just don't deserve move moving on because Switzerland is just a better team. I jokingly said today that, uh, and you know, old guy reference here uh, for me, Serbia are the Axel Rose of the World Cup. You never know when and in what form they're going to show up. It is literally like that. Uh, you saw it all in this game again. I mean... Uh, the one thing I jokingly said, if I could choose two teams of all the contenders here in the World Cup to make the final, to make for an exciting final, it would be Canada and Serbia. Because just of the potential that is there. But, you know, it's not. It's not. And uh, let's see who it is. At this moment, I find it also uh, rather uh, interesting that no one finishes the group with nine points. There was no nine point team. That hasn't happened in a long time, I think, as well. So, rather, rather, rather weird. I would say, since it's very late, um, we have here the results from the past two days, as incredible as they are, but I want to go through the games. I mean, for me, the early game between Ghana and Uruguay, that kind of took the, um, uh, it, all the attention. But then, you know, there was also South Korea against Portugal, where uh, very soon the goals were scored. Uh, but, you know, let's go through it. The, the game started a little bit uh, tedious, uh, but uh, it got unhinged when a penalty was given for Ghana. Uh, because Uruguay, you, uh, you know, there was a penalty, uh, there was an offset decision in there, the ball bounced across, and then um, Kudus is taken down. Um, with VAR, everything was fine. There was no offsides. It was a clear foul. And it's a penalty gone against Uruguay. This time a white shirt against Ur Uruguay. And Ghana cannot score penalties against Uruguay. Andre Ayu, um, I think if he can cheat the goalkeeper, uh, Roche, then maybe, but not this way. This was just way too tentative. And so he misses a penalty and completely upset Ghana because at that moment Uruguay smelled blood, blood and water and they actually showed uh, some courage. They showed some play. They showed us more than they had the entire Tour to Tournament. And with their Gaeta up front, uh, you know, Suarez and Nunez causing kind of to uh, turn and the Arasqueta uh, just four, four or five, five minutes after the penalty was missed can head it in from a short distance and then just another uh, almost five minutes later Suarez uh, really puts him nicely uh, in play and he takes a, vo a wonderful shot makes it 2-0 and at that point everyone knew that Ghana is not gonna come back um, in fact, yes, Ghana had in the second half a good chance, but overall, I really, really felt that uh, Uruguay had it there. But you always knew from the other game, there was a draw and a goal for Korea would take Korea through. So uh, the one thing that is you have, your, your fate is hanging in the balance. Why don't you go 
with more uh, intent to score this third goal. And then it happened. And the weird thing is due to the penalty and another VAR review. And I think in the first half, uh, Derasqueta should actually have been even sent off because there was a clear step on a goal on, on a Ghanaian player. Because of all the, uh, the reviews going on, there was a huge stoppage time. It's almost such a way that the first half started when uh, the other game was already well underway. So this was actually a huge advantage for both of these teams. But you knew the game was in balance and you had much time. And yes, you brought Edinson Cavani. And yes, there was a penalty situation, but there was clearly a ball played. Uh, but you need to go forward and score the third goal. And then, with almost 15 minutes left to play in the Uruguay game, given stoppage time, South Korea gets the go-ahead goal. And you could see how everyone, every Uruguay, we need one more goal, we need one more goal. And at that point, and suddenly Ghana were kind of caught in within a rock and a hard place because on the one side, you know, this also means we need two goals and we have ample of time. Also, a goal of ours will definitely mess up Uruguay's chances, but we also don't want to concede because we really don't want Uruguay to go on. And there was a period there that uh, Ghana, I had the feeling, didn't know what to do. Uruguay also uh, got a little bit too, too, too late. Uh, it was really, really wild that uh, suddenly no defense was there anymore because both teams were pushing forward and then Ghana said no. We're not gonna make the two goals, but we're gonna mess your chances up as well and they hang hung back big time. There was a penalty shot that Cavani should have gotten. Just saying out there. On the other side, I think like Mexico, Uruguay showed up too late. There was one half where they were good, and the second half they messed themselves up again. And then South Korea, who had in every game Maybe they have not created chances. Maybe they even uh, didn't convert well. But I always thought that of all the teams that we have seen in, in, in this group uh, that were now contending, I mean, Portugal was quite good and we know that they could tell him. But South Korea had the clearest idea of play. And while they find themselves down against the B squad and uh, cannot just rail against, Rafa Leao does not get a start in a Portuguese B squad. Give me an effing break. I was actually joking with my buddies today, uh, short buddies, uh, you know, they were saying, oh, everyone's celebrating it, George is out, and I said, yeah, and but who are the bad guys now? And uh, Portugal with Cristiano is kind of an obvious contender, but there's Rafael Leao in there. As long as Rafa is not playing, I'm cheering, I, I will be rooting against Portugal and Fernando Santos and Cristiano. That's pretty clear. They are now my bad guys. Uh, but if Rafa Leao come, comes out, I want him to do as well as possible. And that he's not, uh, not getting a... Po uh, he should be a starter. He should not even be a discussion for whether he should be, he should be a starter in the A-team. It's that simple. So yeah, they're going out. Orta gets the go-ahead goal. Uh, it's by Dalot, who I know also well. And you know, I like Orta for Braga. Uh, Dalot had had a decent season at United. But yeah, Korea get the equalizer through uh, Kim Jong Won. I honestly have to say, I didn't see too much of, 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 of the game, but I felt the entire, uh, entirety of the game that while I think that Korea tried, they never had the, the, the power to really break through. They played nicely, but um, I never felt that they were really, really, really pushing. And their winning goal came from a corner for Portugal. That Son took on and then played it into Juan Hichan, who uh, celebrates. And then the biggest scene, the game ended. And there is eight minutes of stoppage time left to play. There was already eight minutes stop, so that's why I'm a Korea game. And all the Korean players gather around, around the circle to watch the game, watch the game, watch the game. And hoping that no more goals are scored for Uruguay. And in the end, they succeed. And it's South Korea move, moving on. And 20 years later, I was damning South Korea. I'm so happy that they moved on. Because they actually were a good team. So, um, you know... You can also convince me, and South Korea doesn't need bad refereeing to move on, honestly. 
which leads us now to group uh, <laughs> G, the letters go there. Uh, let's go first, Cameroon, Brazil. A, the WTF jersey matchup of the tour to, uh, of, of, of the tournament, why Brazil cannot play in their first kit is beyond me. Uh, yes, you could distinguish them because Brazil are having white shorts, but uh, you see it already here. Green against blue, that's not a good combination to play against each other. It's a very uh, nice one in a way, but uh, that didn't look right at all. The game, the Brazilian B squad, um, you know, they didn't, I never felt they did play all out, but it felt like it's still uh, Brazil. Brazil is having all the control of the game, is creating chances that were saved by the goalkeeper. Uh, it was more like fooling around, but the education chance for Cameroon until very late on Abu Bakar. Who else for Cameroon? I am tempted to say, given what, what he did at the AFCOM, gives Cameroon the goal that actually would have given them damn a chance if Serbia would equalize. Um, you know, it needed, or uh, they, uh, yeah, Serbia needed to equalize, and I think they would have needed another one as well. So it it, it was not a, but that win for Cameroon against, against Brazil so far, whenever Brazil played against Cameroon, Brazil scored three. And Cameroon, I'm not sure if they even scored against Brazil so far. So uh, it's a big win for Cameroon, albeit not against the vintage Brazilian side. This was a B side, uh, still very, 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 very talented, and B side that probably should have won this game easily. I'm not sure if any one of those guys recommended themselves to go in the main squad again. Uh, Abu Bakr then scores, celebrates with taking shirt off, and gets a hug from the, refer the referee and the second yellow in the red card. Stupidity, absolute stupidity, but I guess the emotions got the better of him. But it was and it was pretty clear from, from, from the game because I think no one actually expected Cameron to win against Brazil. And as we know now, I mean, even that, uh, I actually think if Serbia would have won it, they, if Serbia would have won it, uh, no, they had because they lost 2-0 to, 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 to Brazil, whereas... Um, so Serbia so will have needed to win by, by, by two goals. So it was a rather tough choice for Serbia, for Serbia. But in a way, it was kind of set up Serbia against Switzerland. It's the emotional duel of the of the entire World Cup, more uh, more more or less, um, because of the Albanian players within the Swiss team that caused already trouble in 2018. And despite all the officials trying to defuse it, it it flared up always in this game there was always a little bit of edge in this game uh, going on despite everyone trying to play it as nicely as possible and it was a really entertaining first half and it was in the end a perfect win for switzerland um, switzerland started out really bright and server took to, 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 to control but then musa so plays such a sweet pass over to shakiri i mean it was a really nice attack time where shakiri puts it in and of course, needs to shut up the server server fans and show, you know, it's me, it's me, uh, Atomic Mouse, I want to say. Uh, however, Serbia hit right back, and it was so because I thought when Swiss, 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 Swiss took to it, they will take another life out, out of the game, but it did not happen. And Tadish with a wonderful cross that Mitrovic nonchalantly heads in. And then uh, Rema Freula, a little bit um, decombusts, uh, well, may make may attack, he plays the ball beautiful into Vlahovic's pass who makes it 2-1 for Serbia in the 35th minute. That point I thought, do we have really a minor upset uh, at hand? I consider those teams very very evenly matched but Switzerland just a little bit more solid and Switzerland also had a little bit of a Covid scare. Uh, you know Jan Sommer didn't play and so um, there you play Gregor Kobel from Dortmund. Yeah, not a bad goalie but he's now Jan Sommer. Uh, and Elvedi also was out. However, they hit it back and with a really well played goal uh, that uh, where Vidma crosses it in and Mbolo gets it 2 2. And right after, after the half, uh, a goal that was almost as good as the one the Serbia scored against, Cam, uh, against Cam, Cam Cameroon, uh, where I think Mbolo, it was a long ball that Mbolo uh, holds up to. Then you think it's already, or, 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 already gone, but you see that the Serbian defenders don't swarm out to press Sha Shakir, so Shakir can lob it over uh, the defenders. They take him out. Vargas 
Beck heals it to Remo Freuler, who makes good for his mistakes and makes it 3 2. And then the Swiss killed off the game rather expertly. The Serbs cannot look quick on the hit back, they looked tired. And yep, yeah, that was more or less that for it. There were a few bust ups. The Serbs got a lot of yellow cards, uh, and there were lots of ugly scenes that were emotional, especially involving Grani Chaka uh, in there and also a little bit Shakiri. Uh, I think in the end everyone kind of could calm down, but yeah, Switzerland move on. I would have loved in a way to Serbia move on in the second spot because Switzerland plays Portugal and Serbia would have played Portugal as well and you know qualifying that's all I'm gonna say now so with all this we can look at the final group standings here all of all of them uh, presented and it's probably a little uh, nice to just remember how uh, close these groups were uh, we had in Group A a straight shooter between Senegal and Ecuador, uh, Netherlands came through. We had also between United States and Iran, it was hinged on one goal. If Iran gets an equal as Iran move on, England though more or less toying with, with, with the group. We had the menace that Argentina could not break down Poland, but then uh, Poland fell apart and Mexico almost pipped them. It was one goal away in the end for Mexico. Mexico scored one goal. They go through. We had in Group D, similarly, Australia, Tunisia, uh, Australia, Tunisia, Tunisia. If Denmark gets the equalizer against Australia, it's Tunisia going through. If Denmark uh, win it, they are through. So also rather, rather ugly. We had the absolute madness in Group E yesterday, where at one point we had Japan and Costa Rica going through, where an equalizer for Spain against Japan would have meant that Spain and Germany go through. And now Spain are looking uh, in a second place that is not too inconvenient because they are avoiding Brazil, as, as we see. Group F, a goal for Belgium, would have leveled it between Morocco and Croatia to the point where we would have looked into yellow cards. That would have been very, very interesting. We already said uh, Switzerland easily and then yeah, South Korea, Ur Uruguay needed one more goal. So it's an absolute super, super tight group stage. We have now the following bracket from that and I move it already in projection forward um, where we see that uh, how it will pan out if only the favorites go through. We have in the upper side and those games will be played already tomorrow, more on that in a little bit. Netherlands, United States, Argentina, Australia, of course, uh, on paper Netherlands against Argentina, but uh, how cool would it be to see United States against Australia? I also have to say, and maybe this is now a good time, it's a very, if you look over all the bracket, I find this now a very even bracket. Because yes, we have Brazil and Argentina meeting, but I don't trust Argentina all, all that much. And each of them have a rather rather straightforward way to the semifinal. And on the bottom, um, I think the we have probably two really good quarterfinals, but it's not the strongest teams in, in there. So I find uh, with Spain in the lower half, I actually don't dislike this bracket at all. We also have a potential Japan against South Korea matchup. Uh, we had <laughs> if if they beat Croatia and Brazil, will probably not not happen. We could have France Senegal. There's some his his history there. So you know uh, even Morocco against Spain and Portugal is against Switzerland. I mean, you know there there is quite some stuff in there. So I do like that quite some. Um, if I look at, at, at the nations, I mean, it's surprising that only two South American nations are through where we have three from the Asian Federation, 50% of the Asian Federation went through, also 50% of South America, uh, with Australia, Japan, and South Korea, and it's very interesting that it's those uh, Eastern Asian nations and not the ones from the uh, Arabian area uh, that went through, so, uh, and it was could have been in, in there as well. The only Arabic team that still left is Morocco, which seems to be the strongest one anyway. And I said it or, already in my preview, uh, but we also have two African teams. Uh, first time since 2014 that we have that uh, after I think no African team made it through the next round. And we could have well had three. So the African teams actually did much, much better than I, I, I expected. We lost two big Euro-European teams in Belgium and in Germany. 
but I think still the European continent is quite strong. I mean, I count now one uh, in the Netherlands, um, two Croatia, um, yes, two Croatia, um, uh, three England, four France, five Poland, six Spain, eight. Uh, seven Portugal and eight so half of the bracket is European so uh, there's a very very strong European prayer present we will have at least another European finalist if everything goes by plan because the lower bracket is basically Europe against Africa whereas the upper bracket is much more even much 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 more even and all the Asian teams are in there and we have one conquered cuff team in there as well so I find this rather rather interesting um, looking at the overall favorites it's Brazil 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 but we had that before it doesn't mean anything I don't necessarily think that Argentina the second best team although what they have been showing will be, was quite good but we'll see against Australia if they can break down the Aussies that will be an interesting France and Spain right behind uh, but you know uh, we know too little about England and the Netherlands honestly we have not learned much of those two teams just one of one of them I must say and there are a few that are definitely outside us like all the three Asian teams CONCACAF and you know the only European team that is not up up, up there is Poland which is uh, clear cut below Senegal so yeah take it for what but it is here is the round of 16 we get started already tomorrow we don't get the day break that we had in Russia and I think we would actually need the day break honestly but we start with Netherlands against the United States in the Khalifa International Stadium. So that I think will be in Germany, Ahmed Bin Ali. We have Argentina against Australia and then the other uh, games go on. And you know, all of the ones that play on the same day, they face each other then in the quarterfinals as well. So it also matches up nicely in this way. Okay. That was it for me for today. A little bit of a longer video, a very late video. It's almost midnight here, so then I still need to edit this one. But you know, I'll get it. I'll get it out tomorrow. It's fortunately a weekend, so I can sleep in. Any case, I really would like to know what you thought about the group stage. Um, so far, as I said, I was really down on on the group stage after the first two match days, and the final of it completely made up for it and was really 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 exciting and i'm all for here for that and as i said i don't think we'll get better from here what i'm a little bit down is that we have two and a half goals per game which is rather lowish i mean but you know it is what it is any case let me know your thoughts give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more i will talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye